evening campers it is i kieran and you know the time what time is it it's tag time people but before we get there i would like to say a huge thank you to supposedly fun for giving a um a spontaneous uh from what i see my end shout out um to my channel last week um i know a lot of people have um found and stumbled upon this channel from that so first of all greg absolute day and if you're not subscribed to supposedly fun he's like below please do check him out and send all the love from myself one other person who happened to come across my channel was sean the book maniac who i just love that he just rips into books he does not care and has a lovely glass of pino or whatever type of wine it is on the side and they are oh, the friday every friday absolutely Mwah. i want to take a leaf out of his book and do a really silly thing and create my own tag video because because that's what we do over here, apparently, in book two. We just love a tag. So I've created a tag. The Cull Your Bookshelves tag. We're in COVID times. We got enough time. Let's slim down those bookshelves, people. One question at a time. Question one. What is the most recent book that you have added to your bookshelves? And it is People George Bataille's Story of the art but very much when it comes to uh top 10 favorite books top 10 books of the end of the year i'm very keen to see what people have listed as the number one i bet the food book reviews says this is his favorite book of all time the fact that it's like only a hundred pages as well is super keen super keen to find out what has captivated him question two what book have you bought that you have no desire to ever read and I'm going to have to quickly obtain it because it's quite big. Ooh! <laughs> I don't want to put all these. Why? <laughs> I should have done this beforehand. It is Kabuki by David Mack. This cost me £40. It, oh, I, so what I believe about this book is that it was David Mack's, I think it was like his university like dissertation. And then has just continued to work on it to create the collection that is Kabuki. I have no desire to read it, but the art in here is just superb. It's very much black and white, but at the moment you get these beautiful, fantastic uh, noir, like Japanese noir art styles. And it's just an absolute thing of beauty and i never actually picked it up to read question three what is the awkwardest shaped book you own i want to show you this by example we have a normal sized book it's normal size it's similar to most of these nice Here we have disgrace by david coatesy Ooh, oh it's a it's a bit taller who the hell decided to have this monstrosity it's Ferdinand Little. Why are you this big? It doesn't fit anywhere. And if you lay it, if you lay it on its side, it's just too long for anything. So it's just ended up just sat there. Why is it that big? It's huge. Why you can't buy paper this size? It's like what a a five pi over two. It pff, joke absolutely joke and whilst i've been muddling with the shelves question four show us your shelves is there a method to the madness so if you watched my last tag you'll know that these two shelves are predominantly for my man booker project that i'm undertaking which is to read every single man booker winner <laughs> as simple as that on this shelf is mostly the fiction that i would highly recommend so with myself if anything isn't a eight or above i pretty much get rid of it like there and then it goes to a second hand bookshop it goes to the library it goes to charities i send it off to people um i i very stern 
and strict about what I actually keep. So I don't actually have that much. Um, underneath are kind of books that need to be shelved away. And if you head up over here, we got crochet and knitting corner. And some of the books that I've picked up along the way. Um, <laughs> uh, this is Moon Tiger. You go over there. This is a Game of Thrones box set that I picked up because it was £20. Okay, this gets a little bit confusing. So, half of it is graphic novels. So, a series such as Paper Girls, Saga, Why the Last Man. Um, oh. <laughs> Let's not judge everyone. Some people have books. They don't need, exp they need explaining. Okay, these are Bizarro books, which is a very underground and uh, very experimental uh, genre. The best way I would describe a Bizarro book is like an 80s B movie with spaghetti western laden with erotica and gore. It's just over the top. There's no reason why any of the stuff should happen. But the points that they pick up on, once you kind of see past all that, it, it, they're, they're really good books. They're really good. The first one I picked up was um, this one, Cuddly Holocaust, which is, it, it reimagines the Holocaust, but where rather than Nazis, it's like Care Bears who take over. It's It's a hard sell. I'm, I'm going to be completely honest. The reason why I got these, I was really uh, friendly with a bookseller. His name was Sam in the Cardiff branch of Waterstones. And sadly, he moved. But we had a really similar um, taste of experimental. And he had managed to get these books in. And he just... I remember I walked in and he went, Hey, um, I've got some books, but I have to like hide them from the customers. But I think you'd be really keen. Yeah, I kind of like buddy read them with him. But oh, it was it was just a great little judge me, judge me all you want because they're just complete. <laughs> My wife really wants me to get rid of them, but they have like such a special place in. I know no one has them. I know there's no one who has these books, and I just adore it. Uh, what else have we got? And then we got uh, the wives. Uh, hardbacks that she adores, and then some of the series, so the um, N.K. Jemison's there as well. And then right at the bottom, we got uh, all the kids' books. Don't think I'm going to stop at two shelves, you can have a third one for free. So, um, this is, was where my Man Booker Project books were, but I've swapped them out from there. So these would be, if my PhD um, submission goes through, these predominantly would be... Um, the books that I would be using. Uh, these ones are my favourite uh, books I normally go to if people want to um, see what I like. I normally grab these down. So I got Infinite Jest by Dear Foster Wallace, House of Leaves, Marty Danilevsky, and The Overstory by Richard Powers. What a full surprise. Supposedly fun, I'm on to you. I used to have it all alphabetical by author's last name, but um, I found that was like more annoying to know which I was actually started with. Like question five, when you do cull your books, how do you decide what stays and what goes? A seven or below, I just get rid of it like straight away. I'm I'm very brutal. I'm not sentimental in any way, shape or form. I probably would keep all the man bookers. I think if I'm doing a project like that, I want to keep them for the journey. Question six, what is the contender for the oldest book? On your shelves and it has to be I Loved You More by Thomas Spanboer. Uh, I've not read this. Um, my wife started it. I didn't get too far into it but what she read she enjoyed. We're not actually sure why she stopped but this was suggested to us by one of the booksellers in Cardiff and I was talking to him, I said, I, I, I was going through a Chuck Palahniuk stage. This guy taught Palahniuk how to write. So I think they're all in the same writing group and Tom Spanbauer heads it. So what I, what I understand is that it's a very minimalist piece. 
Um, what is it about? It's about it's about a love triangle between two men and one woman, but one of the men is gay and has on-off relationships with women. Uh, it sounds utterly incredible, and I really want to read it, but I think I've had it for seven years, and I've just not bothered. But I would like to get to it. I really, really would like to get to this in some way, shape, or form, completely. Question seven, what is a book that you have read but would really struggle to summarize it for someone oh i love to hate her it's ali smith and spring i hate ali smith i hate her so much <laughs> that i have bought all her books and read them just on the basis that i will just not enjoy them i don't get the hype I don't get the high. What happens in this? Um, it's a guy who writes a play. It's a guy who wants to write a play, and the the his manager's got the same name, uh, and he tries to kill himself on the train tracks. But there's a a a girl. They go on a train across Britain to go on a march. I, oh, it's just a, it's a nothing bug. It's such a nothing bug. I don't know why I've kept it. I don't know why I've kept it. I don't know why I got this. Question eight. Some books are to be cherished. What book do you own that you could never part way with? It's a killer mark of earth. I picked this up when I was 16, Gatwick Airport, on my way to Melbourne. And I don't know why I wanted to read a classic, but I very much was fixated on reading Moby Dick. I was convinced I would just walk into the W. H. Smith or wherever the bookshop was in the actual like airport lounge and Moby Dick would be everywhere. Um, there wasn't, but I picked up this alongside Lord of the Flies and I absolutely loved it happily what a what a fuck oh. and then question nine i don't want you to throw any of these books away what i actually want you to do is send them to someone so actually physically send them to someone be that a close friend a relative or reach out to someone on booktube i just want people to like share literature and very much a advocate of that. I think what I would probably send out of all of these would be the story of the eye to a friend of mine, um, Sam, who's Raul Duke. I'll link him below. Um, his artwork's fantastic. He does a lot of art for um, rappers and he's great. He's great. Check out his Instagram. I'll link it below. But the reason why I would send it to him is that we have a very interesting relationship over J.G. Ballard's crush in which he refuses to read it to the point that I mention it every single time I can to him on social media. And for his birthday, I just send him snippets from this book because he is so baffled at how it's written and why it's famous. And I feel... Based on what I know about this book, it's going to be a very similar thing. So, uh, if you're watching this, Sam, expect this coming in the post to you at some point. Um, <laughs> now, now with all... Jesus! <laughs> I'll do it like this. good book tags. I'm going to have to tag people. So, um... <laughs> book tags i'm gonna i'm gonna tag supposedly fun show the book maniac erin brought a book amy's bookshelves kuhu reads and simon savage and if you haven't been tagged you could you could do it it's completely fine but when you do the tag be that any of you out there at me let me know with the comments give me a message on instagram please just let me know and we can all call our bookshelves ready to fill them up with the bunk and things we aren't probably going to read for a good, good while. Tally ho, have a good day, evening campers.